Welcome back to Flexbone 101. This is going to be a little bit of a different series that I'm hoping to call, uh, you know, lower level play calling. And the idea is that I want to be able to help uh, other coaches, new play callers, because a lot of questions that I get are, hey, why did you do X? Why did you do Z? Um, you know, what do I do if I see X? Um, a lot of those type of things that can be really difficult for new play callers. And frankly, it's uh, it's a good way for me to go through and view my play calls kind of critically and see what's going on. Um, now that I'm calling plays for our sophomore team, um, I'm really going to focus on the strategy here on what that actually means, why I call things the way I do, what I like here, what I'm seeing, maybe what players tell me. Um, what I'm not going to focus on is independent. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, individual contributions, right? If a player messes up or if a player does something um, full solely looking on like the actual higher level coaching points. Um, also, remember, these are sophomores. Um, I'm going to delete any negative comments. Um, you know, they're kids. Uh, and that's kind of what makes the game fun. That's why we're coaches. And lastly, um, in terms of scouting, I'm not really worried about coaches scouting me. Uh, if you've seen my channel, if you know anything about me, you know what I'm going to do, you know what I'm going to call, and I'm still pretty confident that I'm going to be able to beat you with it. So uh, all that being said, I think we can jump into uh, some of the play calls from our first week. Uh, and while I'm setting this up, uh, just to give you an idea, so our first opponent is going to be a, uh, a non-conference and, uh, you know, a little bit of a different team than we would normally face, someone that we haven't seen before. We didn't know, have a lot of scout film on them. Um, and it's also early on in the season, so we pretty much have our base plays in, right? Triple, mid-triple, midline, zone, rocket. Uh, and a few passes. So uh, not a huge expansive playbook to play with here, uh, but let's uh, let's get to it. So with, uh, let's see here, let's get to my, oh, I of course had this queued up, not where I wanted it. So uh, from here, you'll know that uh, on almost any level, especially at the lower level, if I'm banking on an eight man front, which I usually am, um, I'm going to come out in over. So defense is in a four, four stack. Look, uh, I caught them unaware and noticed that they have the outside backer here uh, walked out on the ineligible receiver. So as a play caller, what that tells me is I've got a whole lot of space right here, uh, basically from the inside backer over to work with. Um, and that's kind of the gap that I want to hit and expose. So this first play here, um, I just run triple right. And you'll see that here, maybe I'll run this full speed first. You'll see that our dive read comes across. You know, and we're able to get uh, you know an eight yard gain basically on the first play of the game. So a few plays later, what we're gonna do is notice that uh, in my overset, they're still walking the outside backer out here. Uh, I decide to run Rocket uh, just mainly because I wanted to see what it looked like um, and to see if my stacked uh, ineligible receiver could actually block. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. Hold on. There we go. So I've got my stack back here. Uh, so I run rocket because they're not cheating the free safety and notice that they still have an outside backer and a corner up here at the top. So the more that I can keep them out of the game, the better. So then when I run rocket and we actually get good blocking. 
you'll see that we're able to rip off a big play down the sideline. Uh, we have a great individual effort. But that's the type of thing that over gives you. So moving on, uh, we're going to run triple right again. Except this time, I did not call it the over. So on triple right, we still have our dive read. We still have our pitch read. Nice and easy. Um, nothing's changed there. But then the... Uh, the defensive end wasn't used to it. He had to jump out to and think he had to cover the pitch or the quarterback. That allows the B-back to squirt back into the end zone. Let's see if I can show this in slow-mo. Right, he hops out, creates a nice big gap. And then what did actually that play side linebacker do? So this play side linebacker here, he... He sees dive, he takes dive, we get a great veer block on him, and that's just about as well as you can draw it up. So, once we get that look, we've kind of been hitting him on triple for a while. Notice here, right, still walking out the guy on over. We've been hitting them strongly. Uh, we have a nice big A-gap bubble here, so that's calling for midline. So on our midline play, quarterback keeps, we get a good over block, and we're able to get to the end zone. I guess I should have also mentioned we only got about half of the film for this game, so I can't show you the second half. Um, there were a lot of big plays in this game. Um, I'm not purposely just showing you touchdowns, just those seem to be the plays that worked out really well. Um, but one of the issues that we were having is that their front changed uh, play by play. You know, sometimes the, the defensive end was in a five. Sometimes he was in a four eye. You know, sometimes they were in ones. Sometimes they were in two eyes. So as a play caller, that makes things a little bit more difficult. Um, if you can't guarantee or you're not 100% sure who's a dive player or where they're going to be, um, sometimes it's easier to just run zone and rocket, right? So if you don't have to read those guys and you're strong enough to power the football past them, um, sometimes that's the better call, especially if you're getting a lot of stunts or a lot of blitzes on the inside. Um, I tend to think that's a better look. So here from the nine yard line, uh, we're running over. We run triple again. And again, you can notice that this backer is creeping back inside a little bit more. They're starting to pick up that we're running through that gap. Uh, but we're still getting... Oh, this is actually mid-triple. I take that back. So we have a good... We're able to block this. We're able to come down. And we've got two on two to seal off the inside. And let's see how that works out. Get a good pitch, and now we are off to the races. That's why I really like mid triple, um, especially if you are able to, you know, using over, if you've got that extra half man to the outside that can kind of pin inside those outside backers. Um, it's going to be a really good play if you can get that pitched out to the perimeter. Um, now you'll see, and we noticed that uh, this team started walking this backer he's no longer head up on this receiver he's starting to to apex and more split the difference uh once i see that i know that the outside should be clean if we get a good block out there so uh when they come in we're gonna go out and we're gonna run more rocket and i'd say that worked out fairly well for us uh, I think my video is going to be blocking that, but I think you get the idea. And lastly, uh, I believe this is the last play I have on this playlist. Um, if you followed me, if you follow my channel, you know post-wheel is my absolute favorite route combination. Um, 
this is the first pass I throw in this game, uh, you know, late in the second quarter. And um, for those of you who don't know, post wheel, right? You're going to get a post here. And we're going to fake the arrow and come behind it like this. Uh, it's really hard for eight man boxes, cover three teams. Um, basically, you're optioning this cor uh, cornerback, excuse me, uh, if he's going to follow the wheel, then your post is open. Uh, but most of the time, he's going to drop because he can't let that post get behind him. So if his eyes are inside, you're banking on this guy needing to follow the wheel. Um, and most of the times, especially at the lower high school levels, um, he's not going to be able to do that. And it winds up looking something like this. Um, I would be remiss to say we get a great block backside. Um, we usually block front protection. Uh, our A-back looks inside and then turns and actually gets a backside block, which is what makes this play. All right, so with that being said, let's bring this over. So this is week one, like I mentioned, I'm hoping to run this series uh, every week based on my availability and when I can figure out time to do all this. Uh, leave your comments below. What did you like? What did you not like? What would you like to hear more of, less of? Um, if you want to roast my play calling, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, you know, just leave the kids out of it, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I, <laughs> big tease for next week. Uh, there will be much more to uh, critique in the play calling uh, as we had a much more difficult game. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and I hope this is useful for you. So take care and we'll see you next week.